just right off the bat, I got to put up a photo sensitivity warning. I, I've got a fucking weird one for you today. This is Cruelty Squad. Originally, I wanted to make this video to prove that, even though it looks like a shitty bad on purpose meme game, it's actually a great game acting in earnest. I'm a little late to the party on that one. I was initially intrigued by the game after I heard some Deus Ex comparisons and I saw this line on the store page. Immersive Power Fantasy Simulator. This little blurb looks like a joke, but it is 100% accurate. Also, I saw the part in the trailer where he ran around kicking doors and subatomic particles and kicking people into the upper atmosphere, and I knew I just had to buy the game. I would love to tell you what the premise of this game is so you can have some context for whatever the fuck's going on on screen right now, but honestly, I don't think I can help you here. We're in the same boat. If you're confused and scared, good. That's, that's what the game wants, I think. You play as this guy, and you're being coerced into working for a corporate hit squad, and then the fabric of reality breaks down and Pac-Man invades our mortal coil. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck is happening, but it's a lot, so let's break it down. Graphically, this game is an affront to your fucking eyes. I honestly don't know how else to describe it. It looks like one of those shitpost mods for Dark Souls that replaces all the textures with Shrek or some shit. I mean, just look at these fucking menus, man. You've got nested sub-menus, but they draw themselves out like intestines, and the elements are arranged in a fucking zigzag. Between this and the music, it gives me the same sense of confusion and terror as the menus from Vangers. The models are all low poly with a low texture resolution. It's kind of like Quake or other early 3D games where it looks a little abstract. But it's abstract to the extent where it's hard to fucking tell if this guy's supposed to be naked or a featureless mound of flesh. The textures are often just random colors. Sometimes they're an appropriate material like wood or grass, but it's mostly just random shit with no regard for scale or tiling. And I have no idea if some things are supposed to be this shiny, or if the reflectivity is broken and nobody gave a shit. That's another thing about this game. You'd expect it to be just janky and broken and fucking awful, but it's actually the opposite. The only bugs I found were minuscule. Like, I figured out that breakables will call their on-death function multiple times if you manage to register multiple damage instances in a single frame, like with a shotgun. Yes, that was the most concise way I could word this bug. Fuck you. There's a few visual bugs, but I have no idea if they're actually bugs or if they're like some kind of bizarre artistic intent. Like, was this level supposed to load up in fucking Silent Hill, or was that a bug? When a normal game has something fucking nightmare-inducing like this, you instantly know it's a bug but that's kind of this game's whole graphical style. That being said, I do like it. It is unequivocally, inarguably, fucking ugly, but I like it. The standard for computer graphics is skyrocketing right now, and so are consumer expectations. It's refreshing to see a game- um, my notes just says, um, twitterretard.png. <laughs> it's refreshing to see a game just embrace being fucking ugly. I don't think it's meant as a commentary on the state of the industry, but it's certainly intentional. It's not like Brig in Oaxaca where it looks ugly because the developer threw a bunch of mishmashed assets into an engine nobody's ever heard of. It's an intentional decision from a competent designer. It commits to the style and gets you to decouple your brain from the thought pattern you'd usually have. Like normally I'd play a game like this and try to be stealthy and not kill innocents, but this isn't real life, it's a dream. There are no consequences. Listen to someone's life story about being a speculative architect, which is basically the same thing as having a theoretical degree in physics, and then shoot his head off and steal his organs. <laughs> I'm tempted to label the sound design as ear rape. Okay, that's a book, that doesn't count. I'm tempted to label the sound design as ear rape, but it goes a bit deeper than that. Let's start with the music. In the Mountains of Madness, Lovecraft described the language of the Elder Things as a semi-musical rhythmic piping, and I think that's the best way to describe this game's music. The music is a vaguely musical rhythmic amalgamation of sounds where half the time it sounds like a mix between a sick deus ex combat track and the genuine musical equivalent of a panic attack. And the other half the time it sounds like someone's genuinely trying to annoy you. And I mean you. Fuck you. I mean for fuck's sake, bog business opens up and it's just a bunch of wet sloshing. And then you realize it's basically dubstep but with toilet noises.
If the music was just annoying, I'd turn it off, but it's not. I can't fucking explain it, but it has its merits as a style. It sounds like the actual music that would come from this sewage infested garbage dream world. You know, also, I, I like the music in the game, but uh, just, I gotta say, usually I put, usually when I make a video, I'll, I'll, I'll use the music from the game as the music in the video, but I can't for this video anymore. It's just too annoying. I, it's, it's very nice to keep up the theme of uh, alienation that I want to maintain in this script, but I just, I cannot stand by <laughs> using this music anymore. So we're, we're, we're moving away from that. All right, back to the video. You might expect the gameplay sounds to follow the same pattern, but no. There was a lot of technical competency and effort used to make all the gameplay sounds sound distinct and readable. The more empty your guns get, the more empty they sound. Weapons are all distinct and sound satisfying to use. You can easily identify what weapon an enemy has from the sound alone. It just, it sounds good. It works. Everything else in this game is meant to just fucking annoy you, but this is just good. The sense of confusion and fear you get out of the first two levels is genuinely one of a kind. I imagine this is kind of what it's like for someone who's never played a video game before. The first level just kind of dumps you into the Cruelty Squad HQ, an oasis of love and friendship, so you can have your tutorial. The controls are immediately weird, like left shift to aim, right mouse to reload kind of weird. I instantly rebound them, but why was right mouse on reload? It's because you have to hold the button and then move your mouse to reload the weapon. It's weird, but it's probably my favorite implementation of an active reload, outside of VR, I guess. Once you get good at it, you can do some really stupid shit. I was so used to it that I caught myself accidentally holding R and flicking my mouse in other games, which is really disorienting to do on accident. The rest of the tutorial doesn't yield anything terribly weird, but it does a good job of showing you what kind of game this is. There's a focus on leaning, aiming, and playing carefully, and I was really starting to see the connections to Deus Ex. I remember my hopes for this game being a good immersive sim shot up when I explored and I found this room. You can move the barrels away and slip into the air ducts. These open up into another room, which leads to a pit full of sludge that you can't jump over yet. This checks off a bunch of Imsim boxes for me. This pit is basically screaming that this is the kind of game that'll reward you for visiting previous locations with new upgrades, and that there will be something cool for you here if you do. Sure, this could have just been some random fucking level design choice like an eye, but I was genuinely excited to see what this game had in store. Then you get dumped into the first real level. Before you even get a chance to parse what the fuck this building is, you get this line about a combat cocktail. Okay, thanks, I guess. I'll just go through the front door and... I am a flesh automaton, animated by neurotransmitters. What the fuck? Just like Deus Ex, you can't really run and gun until you get some upgrades. The best way to play is to creep around and blow people's brains out before they even get a chance to react to you. And I gotta say, man, this game has some nice fucking headshots. Then after you've tactically decapitated everyone in the room, walk up and kick their corpse open like a pinata so you can rummage around for spare organs. After you get adjusted to the experience of just playing this fucking game, you'll notice that the immersive sim and tactical shooter influence never really goes away. When you kick something solid, there's a little bit of pushback against the player. If you upgrade the kick, it'll also upgrade that pushback, so you can use it for some sick ass jumps or extra fast bee hopping. There's such a high skill ceiling to kick jumping that I kept the upgrade on the whole game, and I mean, I was really proud of myself for making this jump. I mean, I bought this game because of the kick, did you really expect anything different? You also learned that levels aren't just a bunch of random geometry thrown together, at least not yet anyway, and that there's actually a lot to them. They're kind of put together like Hitman levels, where you have a couple targets and you just need to make sure that they die before making your escape. And like Hitman, there's a bunch of optional areas items, secrets, and creative ways to kill your targets. Like sure, you could just kick down the front door and kill this guy, or you can use your super kick jump to jump directly into his Funko Pop room, then kill him and eat his potato chips. You're supposed to go into this office building and shoot everyone, but if you want to shoot out the windows and let the AI path out of the building, that works too. <laughs> what? Or I mean, fuck it, equip the Germa Height mod in the stealth suit, and then B-hop past all the enemies with your tiny, barely visible hitbox. The game is openly inviting you to break it over your knee, but if you want to do that, you're gonna need to accrue some capital first. Uh, yeah, that song's copyrighted, I can't, I 
can't, can't I can't use this song. This song's copyrighted. So you can catch fish and steal people's organs, and it wouldn't be unreasonable to expect some way to sell stuff like that. But Cruelty Squad doesn't just stop there. It has a fucking real-time stock fish and organ market. The prices of all assets fluctuate wildly, except the pancreas, as modern science has completely eliminated type 1 diabetes. This means that the value of pancreas will always be $1 and will never fluctuate. You may be tempted to ignore this asset and buy GameStop instead, but you can actually use that stability to avoid the resurrection fee. Dump all of your assets into pancreas until you have $0. Since you now have no money, dying just puts you into the negative. You're going to be doing a lot of fucking dying in this game, and eventually corporate gets sick of your shit. They cut you off from the corporate health plan and transform you into a permanently regenerating abomination of flesh. However, they also clear all of your active debt. Power in misery, traversing the dark grid of death. <clears throat> You see, by transferring all of your assets into Pancreas, you're effectively dying on margin, with no obligation to pay back the collateral. Upgrades are fucking expensive, so we need to be on our Sigma Male grind set. This game actually kind of predates that meme, but it's still funny to me. If you want to get rich quick, just buy GameStop. Put all your fucking money into GameStop. Once you assassinate the governor in Mall Madness, you trigger the short squeeze. Congratulations, you are now middle class and can afford to purchase property. But I didn't buy property. I spent all my money on upgrades. While you were out partying, I mastered the grappendix. While you were having sex, I was coating myself in rubber and replacing my legs with jet engines so I could bounce around the level shooting rockets like a cross between a runaway bouncy ball and an M7 spider. You may have many followers, but a true Sigma male prefers the life of solitude. That's why I climb outside of the level geometry and spray cancer gas through the wall to kill my targets without running the risk of unnecessary human contact. You might think that's the end game, that you just break the game over your fucking knee and that's it, but no, this is more or less what the game expects you to do. Once you figure out you can climb outside the level, you're not even halfway done. Did you kill the life boss in the HQ level? Did you beat all the secret levels? Did you achieve the American dream and buy your own house for the reasonable market value of $1 million? Thank you, BlackRock. There's a span of time where the game lets you think you've figured it out. You get the freedom to explore the levels top to bottom and experiment with tons of different weapon and augment combinations. You learn what no apparent downsides means, and then you learn what that border around the screen is actually for. I am a flesh automaton animated by neurotransmitters. If you don't want spoilers, skip to the next chapter of the video. So you're playing through the levels and you're, you're feeling pretty confident in yourself, right? Maybe you've even found some secret levels and whatever the fuck was in that basement. Then the game hits you with Archon Grid and it's like, what? What the fuck? The world is ending? Why are we in Bubsy 3D? Why does Pac-Man want to fucking murder me? What the fuck is that? And then you beat it and you get an ending. Yeah, not the ending, an ending. Now you gotta go get death surgery and then go get cursed so you can eradicate all of your hope and defeat the life boss inside the HQ. He's got a DNA gun and like a fucking billion health and I have no idea why. I ended up killing him by using the ammunition gland for infinite ammo, the gun that deals damage based on your stock market holdings, and the rocket launcher to bounce him away from me so he can't shoot. This is what I was talking about. You can't just grind to get powerful enough to kill him. The game expects you to figure out your own cheese strategy. Like here, I learned this one from Civvy's video. You keep him stunlocked with a tranquilizer gun while spraying him down with cancer gas. When you finally kill him, you get another fake ending. And I gotta say, this whole experience does a really good job of recreating the initial sense of confusion and fear you get from the beginning of the game. The levels you thought you knew weren't actually set in stone. Whoa, 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 what the fuck? What? What the fuck is that? What? Whoa. I. That legitimately gave me a real life heart attack. I. I. I started up the game so I could get footage of the. When the beat drops, I'm going to fucking kill myself, but. Uh, what the hell is that? That's actually the farthest I got. You need to buy the house to get the hardest level in the third ending, and I just didn't feel like grinding or fishing for that much money, especially after spending half an hour trying to get the Zip 22. And that gun is just as fucking bad as you'd expect. Okay, now the... So that was Cruelty Squad. 
despite looking like a shitty bad joke game, I hope I've convinced you that it's actually a great game acting in earnest. Even beyond that, I think that if this game had normal presentation, it'd be underappreciated. Immersive sims are cursed, and I guarantee people would just be bitching about how it's too hard and doesn't spoon feed you enough. If I didn't convince you, then fuck, I guess I'll just go back to my depression nap.